Embroidery is kind of interesting in that when you print something, the ink goes to the paper and it pretty much stays put, right? But with embroidery, all your stitches move. So as you sew them, they'll shift slightly, they'll pull in, they'll push other directions, and that's what we have compensation for in Design Shop. Compensation tries to fight against that natural tendency for those stitches to try to pull in, push the opposite direction. And yeah, there are things you can do from a machine standpoint and from an application standpoint, such as using good backing. Um, but there are also things that we can do to kind of help combat that in the design. And that's with, again, compensation. I've digitized a perfect circle. It looks great on screen. But when it sews out, it may begin to distort a little bit. So the stitch direction is going straight across. And I'm using just walk normals to show on screen some of these things. The stitch direction is going straight across. And as it sews, those stitches are going to begin to pull in in the direction of that stitch line. But then the stitches have to have somewhere to go and they begin to push in the opposite direction. So what started out as that perfect circle, when I sew it out, may end up looking a little bit more like this. So if I have a circle with a border and I digitize it and it lines up perfectly on screen and I go sew it out and it doesn't line up anymore, this could be part of the problem. Yeah, you always have to have things overlap a little bit in embroidery, but you may need to also compensate for push and pull. So how do I compensate for this? It used to be that I would distort things in the opposite direction on screen. So I would do something like this to have it sew out to be a perfect circle. So it extends. I know it's going to pull in. It extends out that way. And I know it's going to push. So I, I bring it in a little bit early. This is what I used to do, and, and honestly, I still do it not infrequently because it's just something that I'm, I'm so used to. But we do have properties that will kind of do some of this for you already. So let me undo back to my perfect circle, and let's right-click and go to Properties and look at those. So what I'm looking at now is under Compensation, and here we can use Pull Compensation. So this this adjusts for the pull of stitches. And if I put in a number here, let's do 120, let's make it really visible. This is not something I would do in a normal sew out. Typically I would do far less than this amount. But I'll hit apply and you can see that it extends the stitch lines by that percentage. So what it does is it takes that stitch line, whatever that stitch line is, and it multiplies it by that percentage. So in this case, this line from here to here is 120% of this edge to edge, the original stitch line. So that's pull compensation. It tends to affect, and you'll notice this here, it tends to affect the wider areas far more quickly than the thinner areas because it's using that multiplication by a percentage. Let me duplicate this. I'm gonna just hold Control D to duplicate it and I'm gonna change the color to, let's do a light blue. And let's take this back to 100%. A different option would be to use Pull Offset. What Pull Offset does is whatever you enter into this field, it will add to either side of the stitch line. So let's go five, hit apply, and you can see, let's do something a little bit more visible. Let's do 10. You can see that it is extending, but it's doing it evenly. So whatever you put, in pull offset, it will add to each side of that stitch line. 
So pull compensation affects the wider areas far more quickly than the thinner areas, and pull offset affects everything fairly evenly. I tend to use pull offset almost exclusively now. Pull comp was available far earlier in embroidery software than pull offset. Um, so you'll see a lot of advice given about adding pull compensation. Pull offset may be a better solution for you for a lot of those situations. Pull compensation and pull offset can also be used to thicken up thinner areas. So not just using them to compensate for the pull of the stitches, although it will do that, it can also be used to just thicken things up, make things a little bit more bold. Here I have an older alphabet, it's Diane script. If I look at the properties, it says that it can go down to 0.35 inches. Well, I'm not even gonna go down that far. Let's go to 0.5. And let's take a look at it. So if I zoom in here, you can look right in here at the inside part of that E, and you'll notice that the stitches get a little sparse. What's happening is Design Shop is seeing things get far too thin, way too thin, and it's filtering out every other stitch so that it lengthens the stitches in an attempt to get you through the sew out without a thread break. But we can do better. I'm zoomed in really tightly on the E now. And if I take my ruler, so I click on the ruler, I can click and drag across this stitch, we can see that it is five points. So it starts filtering out stitches at five points. But if I look at this red circle, I added that red circle just to give you reference that's the size of a needle penetration. That is the size of an 8012 needle. So a 7511 is just barely smaller than that. But that's not going to end well. And typically when I want to sew, I want my stitches to stay above 10 to 12 points. So how can I do that? If I measure, I know this is 5 points. I need it to be at least 10. So let's zoom out. I'm going to duplicate this so we have a few reference points. I'm going to duplicate it, move it down. I'm going to duplicate it, move it down. So we'll have the original. You know what? I'm going to do it one more time. Duplicate it, move it down. All right, so we have the original up here. I'm just going to hide that needle penetration. This one, we're going to adjust so that the thinnest areas can sew. And we're going to adjust it with pull compensation. So it is five, I need to be at least 10. I'm going to multiply that stitch line by a percentage. Five times what percent equals 10? That's 200%. So if I add 200, or if I insert 200% in here and hit apply, this is now thick enough to sew. I can get through the design in those thinner areas and sew it. It does start to close in a little bit because I'm dealing with that multiplication, right? I'm, the thicker areas get far thicker faster than the thinner areas, and the thinner area is what I want to address first because that's what's going to give me the thread break. So here, let's do the same thing again, but this time let's do it with pull offset. So I know that my thinner areas are five. I need them to be at least 10. If I add one, it's gonna go five plus one on one side, one on the other. So that's seven, that's not thick enough. Two, five plus two on one side, two on the other, that's nine. Nope, let's go up to three. Hit apply, and now this is thick enough to sew, but I'm not sort of starting to kind of squish together. The M looks far cleaner, far more readable. The O is not squishing together as much. The E is not squishing together as much. So I can get through this one without a thread break 
but I can also read it a little bit easier. So that's where the difference in pull compensation, dealing with that multiplication, dealing with thicker areas, far more than thinner areas versus pull offset, dealing with everything evenly makes a big difference. Now there is another setting that we could have used. So on the bottom here, we have a minimum column width. And if I know that I never want anything to be below 10 points, I can just put 10 in here. And when I hit apply, it won't ever allow it to go below 10 points. So that will get through it. But I did lose a little bit of my thick, thin play. It's not quite as calligraphic as perhaps this middle option. So first one, not adjusted at all. It uh, has some pretty thin areas that may give me some thread breaks. The second one, we used pull compensation to make it thick enough to sew. And it worked, but the thicker areas are starting to close in on some of the negative space. Pull offset is the third option. That, again, we made it thick enough to sew but my negative spaces aren't closing in as much. And then on the bottom one, we used minimum column width, and that made it thick enough to sew without giving me a thread break, but I did possibly lose the thick thin. I also don't come to a point. All of my ends are very squared off. So you have a few ways to kind of attack this potential problem. What you choose may depend on your application. What's going to work best for you? Another tool we have at our disposal is max pull comp. So what you can use is pull compensation and say, you know what, go ahead and be 200% pull compensation. But whatever you do, don't go above four points of pull comp. And when I hit apply, whenever it starts to exceed four points on either side, it just stops and it kind of evens out. Using these two tools in tandem can get you somewhat closer to just pull offset, but you can occasionally come to a finer point. Other tools we have enable small column pull compensation scale. And what that does is whenever it gets really, really small, it just adds a little bit more. Typically, I'm one to go measure and do the math and put in my pull offset. We also have, so I'm going to really mess this one up. We also have a maximum column width. So just like we had a minimum column width, whatever you do, don't go below, let's say 10 points. I can also say whatever you do, don't go above 20 points. Or we can make it pretty much the same all the way through. Whatever you do, don't go above 10 points and then that would make it even all the way through. So you can put a maximum, you can put a max addition, you can put a minimum, you've got the ability to really kind of tweak these settings to fit exactly what you're looking to have your lettering do. Another tool we have at our disposal for lettering is lettering comp. So while we have the ability to compensate for pull on everything, for lettering, we also have the ability to compensate for push. So lettering comp will cut off the ends of columns on the cap height and on the baseline for any stitch that runs parallel to those lines. So as it's pushing, it just doesn't get to push quite as far so that when you're done, it'll look a little funny on screen, up and down, up and down, up and down. But when you sew it out, you're relying on a little bit of that push to make things look even on the sew out. So again, you're kind of distorting things on screen to make the final sew out look good. And that's where you get into, I'm, I'm not selling what's on screen, I'm selling the sew out on the product. So I need to make that look good, kind of no matter what my design looks like on screen. So here we have some block lettering, and I've got green lines going across the top and bottom to kind of give you an idea of where that cap height and baseline are. And if I select this lettering, I can go into compensation and I can enable lettering comp. And when I hit apply, you can see that it moves in 
the lettering where the stitches run parallel because they're going to push where the stitches run parallel to the cap height and the baseline. So here on the E, it didn't move them because the stitches are running perpendicular to it. So they're going to pull in on their own. So they're going to come down a little bit. This is going to push up. So the idea is, yeah, it looks funny on screen, but when it sews out, everything's going to, the E is going to pull, the L is going to push, and everything's going to line up. If you need to adjust how much this compensates, you can always click on the ellipsis beside the enable checkbox to get the ranges and the amount for which it compensates. So with pull compensation, pull offset, minimum and maximum column widths, and lettering comp, you can compensate for the push and pull of stitches in your embroidery.